Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Uh, today on the show, I have Paul Henschel. Paul, do you want to tell people kind of who you are and, and what you do? Yeah, yeah, I guess not much to tell. I'm a front-end uh, developer. I'm in uh, Germany and Switzerland. I uh, travel between the two. And I'm mostly interested, uh, like, really in front-end design, uh, animation, this sort of thing. Uh, I'm the author of uh, React Spring, or the founder, and uh, React Free Fiber. And I think I'm going to teach you, like, aspects of both today, like a little overview. Cool. Yeah, I um, I have not used either, so we are going to. Oh, for real? Okay. Yeah, so I'm super excited about this because um, animation is something that like I've been doing front end forever, and all of the animation that I've done has been like small CSS transitions or or little looping animations, um, almost mm -hmm. exclusively with with CSS or sometimes using JavaScript, like back in the jQuery days. So this is all uh, this is all very new to me. I'm super excited about it. Um, well, cool. So, yeah, I I am really, really pumped to have you on the show. I think this is going to be a good kickoff for us because uh, we're kind of launching into a week of animation here. Um, we have you on the show, and then next week we've got Sarah Drasner, and she's going to teach us um, just 3.js, which I'm I'm super excited about too. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I I'm I'm stoked to just like get right into this. I'm uh, I'm chomping at the bit to to write some code. Um, how how should I start? What What's a good starting point? Okay, uh, given that you are going to talk about three anyway, uh, I, I make a quick, I would give you uh, like a very small, uh, like update what uh, 3.js is. Okay. And I guess uh, afterwards we can uh, go, go about it, uh, try hacking out some code. Okay. So the basic idea is that uh, the browser has a technology called uh, WebGL. It's uh, running on the GPU. It's extremely fast. And uh, there's a guy, he's called, I think, Ricardo Cabello, Cabello I don't know. And uh, he's made a, an abstraction of this. It's called 3JS. It's like one of the biggest uh, libraries on the, on the internet. I mean, in, in the JavaScript space. Uh, the problem with uh, WebGL is uh, it's super complicated. Uh, you do everything on your own and you are on your own. Like okay. you're really in the rain. You, you can't like just reuse stuff that other people make. So uh, that's why we have uh, 3JS. Um, okay. This one is huge. Uh, it's used by like Nike, Apple and so on. There's like uh, really big names uh, going with this library. And, the, and these are uh, it's like, amazing. Yeah? This is just a whole collection of, of examples. It looks yeah, like. they are like examples that you can uh, try out. I mean, it's really cool. <laughs> All right. I was not ready for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think they all have like sound effects. Don't don't even bother. <laughs> oh, this is really cool though. It's like, yeah, it's just like really cool things that um, you know stuff that. It's hard to believe that this is done in JavaScript, right? Um, yeah, I guess exactly. Uh, that's that's actually also my point for for trying uh, to make this more like uh, mainstream. Yeah, three JS uh, is already uh, way easier than WebGL, uh, but the problem, of course, it's uh, it's fully imperative. Uh, as you know, imperative means uh, you're like adding stuff to it, removing stuff, and if something changes, you're like traversing the scene graph. So if you have ever seen uh, 3JS code, it looks like threatening, uh, intimidating, really uh, heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's the same problem we face uh, with the DOM, basically. That's why we have React. And um, some people have actually tried uh, bringing this to React. But I figured uh, these solutions were like unmaintained or like half-baked or not generic enough. Like 3JS has like hundreds of classes. So they, they are pumping out new stuff. And uh, if you're a maintainer of this, it's a nightmare because uh, they have an update you need to chase uh, behind it. So the idea with this reconciler was, um, it's like totally uh, generic. It's used like uh, heuristics and stuff. So uh, it works with 3JS version one and 3JS version later, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so I don't even need to care if, if they release something new. I don't care. It will just work. That was the, the basic idea behind this. 
And of course, uh, now you can use React, uh, you can form components, um, you can use Redux, you can animate, like the full ecosystem is like open and that makes it very easy. Uh, as you can see, uh, what you have in front of you are like components, you can mount and unmount. Here you see some little condition, mm -hmm. show plane and I don't know. So well, and this is, this is really mm -hmm. exciting because it's, you know, we've got, it looks like one custom hook here, but in se about 75 lines of code, you've built out this whole animation, which is that, I mean, that makes this feel more approachable, right? Um, yeah. It's, I mean, this one is like, it's using physics. It's uh, another lib called Canon, but in 3JS you can uh, like integrate all this stuff. So I've read, wrote myself some uh, hook for this use Canon. Okay. But we're not going uh, to go that deep. I mean, you will talk about 3JS enough in, in this later episode. So today okay. just do some simple stuff, but uh, let's do some damage. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, um, so yeah, I have... I, I hope something cool will come out. I would be very happy if you set up... Uh, oh, you have already. That's cool. Yeah, I've just got an empty uh, folder. So, yeah, so install. Uh, you use Yarn or NPM? Yeah. Um, I use Yarn. Um, is Should I just right. set up like an empty React project? I, I typically use Gatsby. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I'll do... And you're going to install... Uh, the first one is uh, three. Uh, give me just one yes. second to get this this empty project set up. Um, so we'll okay. do a Gatsby starter, hello world, which just sets up mm -hmm. like the, the basic commands. It's kind of like a, a new Create React app. Um, All right. And so that'll give us just the ability to run... Um, the site in the browser so that we will have like a hello world page and uh then we'll install you said we we're going to install three um i mm -hmm. guess i can just start typing while this is going is that going to work it's not yeah that's cool i've never uh, tried gatsby before so i also get to learn so exactly three then uh, react three fiber React 3. And uh, while we added uh, React Spring, we are going to animate. I okay. Guess. Right. These three. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> um, yeah, I saw that, Vipasama, that it, it does work in the background. I Usually it shows me like one character at a time and I didn't see it, so I thought it was not working. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, too slow with the elevator music, Eco Math. It was already done. Um, okay, so now I have just this empty React component, and this is the only thing that's being rendered right now. Um, so everything else is just uh, like this is an empty config file. We, we don't have anything going on. So we're pretty much in business to just do whatever we want in here. Just uh, what was that? Oh, the elevator music? That, so so the, <laughs> um, with it, people can play sound effects as we as we do things. And so one of the, the sound effects that people play is elevator music while we do node installs. Because if they... When it gets into boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we, uh, we're we we're pretty much in business here. We can start doing whatever whatever you want. All right, uh, does, this, does this come with, uh, with some kind of default style? I, um, let's try to, to stretch out our margins and uh, our canvas first. Okay. I guess uh, you need to import, I don't know how Gatsby works, but if you have something like a style. Oh yeah, um, so I can, I can just do, yeah, we'll just add a mm. style.css. We'll do plain CSS today. Um, and Perfect. do you, you want the, like, am I adding a canvas or do you want the div to be full screen? Uh, just everything 100%, uh, margin zero. So body, HTML, root, whatever you have. Also the canvas element. Everything like uh, goes full screen for this one. Okay. Um, so I will do like a um, body, HTML. Yeah. Roots um, and canvas. Root. So like root like this. And then canvas. Uh, I think root is uh, an ID, or is it? Um, Do you mean? Class? Oh yeah. Class. So like with with Gatsby, um, I think that would actually be called Gatsby, and then the canvas will be okay. there. So we'll do um, with the hundred percent. 
Um, height, 100%. Um, Adding zero. Adding zero. Margin zero, padding zero. Padding zero. Yeah, I just to have some canvas. Okay, it's right. Okay, and then we'll import that uh, style.css. Okay, uh -huh. and then here. That's that's right. Uh, can we see something? Sure. Should I um, should I put something? Yeah, in... uh, the the hello world uh, was fine. Okay. Uh, you need to like I I haven't seen Gatsby before. Just need to get some some idea. For sure. Um, Ecomath, that is fascinating. If you want to send me details on what the what that means for parity purposes, because that would be fun. I just want to make sure I don't get taken down on YouTube. Um, okay, so we have a page, and it is currently up and running. Hello world, um, and our Gatsby is a hundred percent. This div is not. We didn't style that. Um, so we're going to put a canvas in here instead. Um, but that's that's where we're at. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so let's try it. Uh, every change that we make uh, takes uh, as long as this, or they are like nope. Usually it's quicker? it's uh, it's live reloaded. So if I um, right. here, if I make a change, it'll show up in real time. Oh, awesome. Okay, so I guess the first thing uh, we need to do is um, you get the canvas component from the React Three Fiber library. This is what what gives you exactly. This is what gives you um, like uh, the GPU uh, uh, enhanced canvas, whatever. Okay. And uh, yeah, just just write out. Okay. Okay. Should I now you have a canvas. Let's try if it shows up. <clears throat> okay, and so just kind of empty. Empty, but yeah, it's empty, but we should see it in the dev tools. Just hope that it's big enough. Yeah. Here's right. our canvas. Yeah. It is full width. So we are in 3.js now, and we can uh, pump uh, 3.js into it. Uh, 3.js has lots of classes. Um, okay. They have uh, like uh, building blocks. Uh, we are going to start with them. Uh, so the first one that we're using is uh, called a mesh. Um, they are like JSX elements. You don't need to fetch them. They are oh. native. Yeah. So just uh, pump them into the canvas. Okay. So I'm going to do a mesh. Exactly. Like, okay. Uh, it's an element. You can uh, close it. Okay. Uh, I mean, um, open close so uh, it gets uh, some other children okay all right uh, so a mesh uh, basically means um, it's an object and it cont uh, contains vertices vertices uh, are like uh, points connected to a surface uh, like a polygon okay three points and you have a triangle so this one now needs um, Geometry. If you want, you can open uh, the uh, 3JS website, which you have, and uh, better just uh, switch it to documentation for now. Okay. We are going to to recreate uh, like the demo that they have here. You can scroll down. Um, yeah, they they show you like uh, the ropes. Okay. Um, if you search here, um, there's this little exactly uh, just go mesh. And should be down there. These are like materials. It's yeah, this one the object. So there you see how how it basically works. Uh, box buffer geometry, and you have a material. So this is what we are going to do. Um, let's let's just uh, try. Okay, so, so I'm going to add geometry and material. Yeah. And do I add so it basically you could like this? Uh, you could do it here exactly. And uh, you could say, uh, like, um, put some brackets in there. And you could uh, say, like, new 3JS uh, dot, I don't know, some stuff like this. But we are not doing this because okay. uh, it would recreate uh, geometry on every render pass. Okay. And uh, it would be bad. Also, we don't want like to memoize it. We want to uh, hack out everything uh, de declaratively. Okay. So remove this thing, this geometry thing. 
and uh, give it a new object and just call it uh, box buffer geometry inside of this one. Inside of here? Inside of the mesh. Uh, no, you don't need uh, brackets. It's, it's an object. Um... Just uh, like open uh, like a tag, um, like, like a real child, exactly. Okay. And you call this box buffer geometry. Mm -hmm. Okay. And buffer and geometry is uh, big uh, in caps. Okay. This one, you can close it. It doesn't have any children. Uh, better give it uh, some, some, how do you say, uh, some new line. Sorry, my, my English is messed up. No, no problem. I'm, I'm German. Okay. All right. Uh, this will do nothing. Um, the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to attach it to the upper mesh. So you, it has a property. It, it's called attach. And it gets a string. It targets the property um, geometry. So this is just basically the same thing which you have done before. You have, you have set a mesh geometry, and then you say new three blah blah blah. Uh, okay. So this 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 is the same thing, and just declaratively. I and get it. Now you need to give it uh, arguments. You can uh, consult uh, the three JS uh, uh, documentation, and click on box buffer geometry. You need to search uh, for it. Yes, there it is. And it has basically, um, I think, three properties. Okay. Yes, it's, um, it's uh, length, width, and um, height. Okay. So, in the way it works uh, in uh, three fiber, uh, you go back to the code. Did I just do length? Width and height. Yeah, this would be nice, but uh, it's uh, 3JS is a little bit more complex. Uh, this okay. is actually like, um, yeah, it's, it's not a scene object, uh, specifically speaking. And you need, uh, it's like a class in reality, and uh, it needs a constructor. Okay. And constructors are done with the arcs uh, prop. You just say arcs. Arcs? Yeah. You give it uh, brackets and an array of arguments okay and these are one 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 comma one comma one okay you can save it and you have a box uh here we go i mean show tab yeah oh cool right. so it's the first primitive if you refresh uh, you get different colors because it uh, randomizes them okay we, we haven't given it uh, material material means um like you shade it in a, in a particular way. Okay. So um, this next step we are doing, um, we are going to give it a material. So uh, if you go back to the code, just uh, give it another child and it's called uh, mesh basic material. Mesh basic material? Yes, uh, you and attach it to the um, material property. And you, now you can say color, it's a uh, color, I don't know, red. Could be a string. And you close it off and that should work. And now yeah. if I refresh, it's always red. Yeah, it's just like this. So this is basically the, the cheapest, dumbest thing we can ever do. Um, sure. This material looks looks like horrible. It's, um, I mean, it doesn't take anything into account. Uh, lights, there's no shadows, it looks mm -hmm. pretty crappy. Uh, so let's try to improve upon this um, a little bit more. Um, is it? Is it I'm, oh, wait, I'm seeing uh, in the chat that it's args, like with a G, not a C. Is that correct? Yeah, it's args. What did you say? I put arcs. Um, so ah, I was just okay. spelling thing wrong. Yeah, so apparently it, it defaulted it for us. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they are hmm. They're right. <laughs> okay. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mamos, for that. Um, all right, so we we got the basic thing running, right? So, yeah. what uh, what should we do next? Uh, I guess the logical uh, next step would be to make a component out of this. To, so you cut uh, this out, uh, starting from mesh, okay, and you create a function component with this. So now we are already way ahead, three uh, JS. 
Okay. And I'm just going to drop it in like this. Uh, that would give you uh, like uh, one with brackets uh, because we are going to use hooks in this and all this stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah. And just return. All right. So if you save this, we have uh, the box. All right. Um, it means it has mounted. We can now unmount it and so on. Um, so uh, I guess I will show you how to do some basic uh, events on it like you can interact with this um let's do some basic hover okay okay all right so for this uh we need uh use state uh you use state from react oh. got it yeah exactly uh you say uh we have some some kind of um how do we, come, how do we name it uh, hovered i guess and set hover and it's false, uh, false by default. Okay. All right. Um, now you can already uh, go to the color, uh, the color red. Okay. And make it conditional. If it's not hovered, uh, let's say uh, it's gray, and if it's uh, hovered, I don't know, hot pink, whatever. <clears throat> hot pink. So it should be gray now. If you save it, it's gray. Oh, wait. Why? Oh. What? Other way around. Oh, right. Yeah, right. It's, yep, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Um, fine. Now we need to uh, register events on this mesh. So you can go directly to the mesh. Uh, directly to the mesh. And, yep. And you use pointer events, uh, just regular pointer events as you know them in the DOM. I've, I've modeled these events after the DOM. Uh, no, they are called on pointer over and out. On pointer over. Oh wow, I don't yeah. know that I've I don't know that I've ever used these in React. Um, Not for real. <laughs> and so this would yeah. be. I mean, I, I think they haven't been in in Safari for this reason. I guess. True. And then. That's correct. On pointer out. I'll set it back to false. <laughs> Right. That's it. No, no, yeah. Now you have hover. Boom. <clears throat> so yeah, it's the same thing as in the DOM. Let's do another one. Um, let's make some interaction uh, like uh, click state, active and inactive. Okay. So same thing. Uh, you have um, your state uh, active, I guess. So and set active, false by default. And the event is called on click. Yeah. Let's see if you. Um, we would just do like toggle it basically, right? Or did yeah. you, is, is no, that okay? No, it's, it's, it's perfect. Okay. <clears throat> so, and now let's make it uh, a little bit bigger if it's active. Uh, so the mesh property it uh, has a couple of, I mean, the mesh object, uh, the mesh, the one uh, that's uh, carrying all this. This one? Yeah, this okay. one uh, has a couple of interesting properties. It has a position, uh, it has rotation, and it has scale. Okay. Uh, so let's try to scale. Um, yeah, if it's active, you need to give it an array. And uh, it's like X, Y, Z. So uh, okay. let's say 1.5, one um, yeah, 1.5 for X, Y, Z. Oh, for each one. OK. If Yeah, if you want, you can also deform it. You can Oof, da. It All right. Well. So that's exciting. <laughs> um, OK, so if it's active, we'll do that. And if it's not, we just give it 1, 1, 1. Yeah. OK. So that's it. You should be able to click it. Cool. And then if I like mess with this, like the, I'll yeah, no, you this can one like one. Uh, I don't know, squeeze it. Cool. Okay. So, uh, yeah, let's try to animate this. It would be, I guess, the logical next step. We are going like uh, step by step, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, let's fetch uh, React Spring. Like we want to have some cool animation, not just like statically uh, go 
Okay. Red and hot paint. We wanted to animate. And what's the the convention for this? Is it like an import spring or import React spring? Uh, it's called use spring. It's a hook. Use spring like this. Yep, from React Spring. This one is going to be special. Um, you give it a slash and uh, you say three. React Spring slash three. Okay. I okay. Uh, I guess um, I have to explain uh, React Spring is cross-platform. Oh. Um, there's, you can say like uh, slash universal and now you could use it for each and every re reconciler. I don't know, React Hardware. React uh, PDF, uh, React Native, it doesn't oh, matter. Cool. But you can teach uh, React Spring uh, to animate outside of React so that actually the component renders once and it animates uh, completely in its own like loop and it's uh, way more performant. So that's we're using uh, slash three here. Mm. Uh, you need to have another uh, thing that you need to import uh, after the uh, use Spring. And this one is going to be uh, a little bit weird. Uh, it's called A. A? Like literally A. No, it's a small one. Oh, a small one. It's a shortcut for animated uh, React Native users. They know this oh. uh, because you animate uh, React Native. Also, you have animated.diff, animated. Dot, ah, wait, no, they don't have this. Animated.view, whatever. So if you've ever used React uh, Native, you know this. Okay. And I was like tired of writing animated all the time, so I made sure. also a shortcut. Okay. Uh, so let's uh, figure it out. Um, could you put a new um, use spring hook after these uh, use states? Yeah. What uh, and does that return an array or? Yeah. Um, let's call props for now. Uh, it's not an array. Just oh, just gotcha. call props. Use it's an spring. object. And does it Use take spring. an argument? And uh, this one takes an, uh, an object. Uh, the idea is this. Um, right now, you have state, two states. You have hovered and active. Uh -huh. And um, React Spring can turn static values into values that animate by themselves. Okay. So basically, what we're doing is um, copy everything that is inside scale. Down there, copy it. You can remove it if you want to. Okay. And uh, name it scale. Yeah, uh, comma. Oh, and then should I do the same thing here? Same thing there. Okay. And then do I just swap these out for the like props dot exactly. color? Better uh, up there where you have, uh, yeah, you do it like this props dot uh, color and props dot scale. And now just put an A in front of everything you're going to animate. You animate the mesh and uh, the material. So, so like A. this? No, yeah, exactly. And the material. Save it. Now it animates. Whoa. That was so easy. It's, uh, I mean, it's hooks, man. Uh, hooks are really fascinating. Yeah, holy crap. That was, I am, this is making me very happy. I'm like, ooh, I can do so much stuff because this actually makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the same in the DOM. It's the same principle. It basically uh, converts uh, static data yeah. Into animated data. Uh, let's do something uh, cool. Put a console log into this uh, component. Console log. Over this uh, uh, return. Uh, which one? Just over the here. Return. Yeah, just like hello world, whatever. So if you've ever used like React Motion, you know that this thing will like re render your React component 60 times a second. So this won't, it will render once. You can see it now in uh, console log. Hover it. Yeah. I don't know what's uh, what's happening right now. I don't either. It's like. I think we messed it up with the dev dev tools or something. Oh wait, here we go. It just it like froze on me for some reason. 
Mm. Oh, it's because so we did the width and height. Ones, yeah. It, it goes completely outside of React. It's like super fast, super performant. That's really so, cool. Um, you and you can close it on the DevTools. Okay. Uh, now I'm showing you something else. Uh, what we're doing now is uh, React animation. Um, this is natural for React. For 3.js, it's actually not natural. I mean, of course, we should use it if you need it. Uh, but uh, 3.js normally is used for games. And uh, they have a concept. It's called a game loop. Okay. So normally, they have a loop. And inside this loop, uh, they have like a timestamp. And they start uh, messing around in there. So let's let's try this for now. OK. Um, uh, there, there's finished. a quick question um, just to, to clarify. Mm -hmm how it's only rendering once um yeah when so when the component renders instead of having to loop you are taking it out of react and handling that animation and then you just bring back the render at the end of the animation is that right uh yes uh, i guess so i mean react spring has its own uh, request animation frame loop okay and it knows uh, like the reference of the uh, node that it wants to animate, and uh, it, can, it just like mutates the, mo uh, the node. Okay. So uh, it skips React basically, gotcha. because if you wanted to do this with React, like uh, refreshing a component, mm -hmm. uh, it would be super heavy because React needs to to I don't know reconcile the whole thing. Right. And uh, this is not good for perf uh, performance. So this is uh, like. How is it called? Uh, GSAP, Greenstock, Animation uh, IP, or Tween, all this just like old stuff, jQuery. Yeah. But they were super fast, if you remember, mm -hmm. uh, this time. So it's pretty much like this. Okay, cool. Very cool. Um, all right. Oh, and so the, the next thing that you wanted to do was uh, game, loop. game loop. And do I get that out of Fiber or Spring? Uh, this you get out of Fiber, exactly. Um, the thing is like this, if you scroll down to the canvas. Um, scroll down to the, oh, to the canvas. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, this gives you like a GPU driven canvas and actually right now it renders 60 frames per second. Okay. Uh, you can stop it. You can do like um, only render when you need to, but right now it's in game loop mode and uh, I guess uh, it's fine for now. And we have the possibility to hook a, a function component into this uh, game loop. So what you need is a hook. It's called, uh, oh my gosh, use, use render, I think. Use render? Yeah. Exactly. So just plaster it in there into the, the box component. No, no, this fine. Oh, oh, oh here. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. OK. We're going to like uh, rotate the box now. Uh, you, this has no uh, return, so just uh, use render. Oh, just like no, that's it? Yeah. Oh. Like this, uh, it's a function inside. Okay. You can give it empty parameters, but normally uh, it, uh, if you need access, if it gives you some internals, but we don't need them. Okay. Uh, so everything that is in there is executed on every frame. So right now we want to mutate our mesh. We want to rotate it. So you need to have a reference on it. So uh, make a just basic React reference on this mesh. OK. Mm -hmm. And we'll call it uh, mesh, mesh ref. Mm -hmm. And then we add ref. mesh ref. OK. That's it. Mesh ref current. And now you have access to the actual 3JS element, which is really useful. So uh, let's try rotation. OK. And just? Just like that. And um, rotation, say, I don't know why. Like this? Uh, it's a dot y. This dot one. y. Mm -hmm. OK. And uh, plus equals? Um, dot class like this? Uh, no, um, just plus without without any of this class stuff. You just say oh, plus, plus equals. Plus. OK. Plus equal. Uh, well, zero dot zero one. OK. And run it. 
Whoa. But it's still interactive. You can still like hover, you can make it active. Wow. So this is a game loop. So you have two, two like modes of uh, animation that you can use. Yeah. Holy crap, this is so cool. Um, damn, that is really like. It's just it's just a box, Jason. I yeah I know. Look, I like this is. Holy <laughs> buckets, did that just work? <laughs> this is all so. Uh, it, it's so like in my head, animation is so hard, right? Like, there's so many things happening. There's so much math involved, mm -hmm. and so seeing how um, how straightforward you've made this. Um, this is super impressive stuff. So I'm, I'm so happy to see this working. Um, well, this is cool. Yeah. So, all right, this is amazing. What, what should we do next? I mean, yeah, uh, from now on, uh, all doors are open. We can make games. We can use it for front end. I actually made this because I'm like sick and tired of the DOM. Uh, they're telling us that, uh, the DOM is like, uh, fast or it will get fast, but like it chokes, you have like 10 diff boxes and it's, it got them, it chokes. So now you have the possibility to separate a little bit. You can use the DOM for like layout, which is cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can do lots of cool stuff uh, with shaders and, and whatever. If you've ever seen this, this one website is called AWWW Awards. I don't know how to pronounce yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awards. So half of the stuff is like using... Um, WebGL, yeah, for some reason, uh, God damn, there's some insect. <laughs> uh, for some reason, it, it didn't really arrive in the circle I was landing, like the JavaScript um, community that I know. For some reason, uh, this stuff is really uh, like far from this. Uh, this guy, he's called K Kitze, Kits, Kitsa, the, yeah. the Kits. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was like, um, he saw some someone made some some crazy demo about some like moving train and you can like select seeds and he's like how the hell is this uh is this going to work and we are so screwed in the web and i was going no this would be actually really easy to pull off um he couldn't believe it so i made some little demo to to show him so actually we have everything we need in the browser we just it was just like so far and so foreign from react that maybe we didn't dare to to use it so that is the the idea behind react 3 fiber yeah i don't know i guess you won't we'll never find out this guy treats like yeah he, <laughs> yeah kitsa is uh he's also the creator of of sizzy app um which is a pretty yeah, cool yeah. like responsive he's browser hmm. um He's a professional yeah, shit poster, like, though. Uh, so uh, you you can <laughs> if you have my Twitter, you can you can see the demo. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Oxc a. Oh no. This, this name is terrible. I don't know what came into my head. Okay. It's like most terrible choice for like marketing my stuff, <laughs> but whatever. Um. But yeah, I think I I think I remember seeing this. It was like it's one down. I think a couple. It should come now. Maybe yeah. Two, here. Yeah. So click the, yeah, you don't even need to click it. It's just uh, literally. Very, very cool stuff. Um, and so this is just in, in the React 3 Fiber. Yeah, yeah, and React uh, Spring. And if you click it, it's not much code. It's actually really easy. If you see the code sandbox, it's very logical. Like everything is a component. Uh, the quarter is a component, the cabin, the seat, um, everything is there. You just compose it and you have like hooks and animate it like you animate everything else in the DOM. So as you see, it's just little bits of, of logic and information. It's yeah. straightforward. So I hope that all these things, they, they lead to, to like, uh, like, I don't know, people using the stuff and doing cool things. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. So one thing that I'd love to see, um, just kind of looking at this, is mm -hmm. could could we put some light on this so that it has like shadows so we can see the different exactly. sides as it rotates? Yeah, that's the next uh, step, I guess. Uh, let's let's do something else before. Uh, let's put some controls in it so that we are able to like move this around. Uh, oh yeah, you want to? Yeah, so like if I if I click, I can rotate it. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, let's um, do that. 
you have seen the the transmit application right they have some little like um, truck uh, in, it's a gatsby site i think um so, transmit app right that's the this one Mac app. yeah it takes a little bit to load but eventually you can like uh, if you click you can uh, rotate or you should be i don't know maybe they have if they cut this out happens nothing if you if you uh click it and drag nah, I'm, I'm clicking and dragging and nothing's happening maybe i'm on the wrong maybe this isn't the page where it was happening no it's the page they have they've taken all <laughs> oh that's too bad that really sucked. but it doesn't matter we do something like this okay so it would be cool for some gatsby block whatever so yeah. first uh, cut out uh, this this game loop stuff we don't need it because we are the ones that uh, rotate it Okay, so do I want to keep use render or do I want to yeah, get rid of it altogether? Just remove it. it okay. Just stands in the way. Can remove uh, the, the reference. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. And we're not using use ref or use render anymore. Okay, so we're we're back to a static box. All right. So next, we need to have some controls um, in three JS. Uh, it's, it works like this. You have a camera. I give you one by default. It's a perspective camera. It's it's like five units uh, from the from the object. This is uh, what what is looking on uh, onto the box right now. Okay. You can change it, whatever. But um, then you have a different prototype called um, controls. And with controls, they um, steer the camera. So we get controls from uh, three itself. So you say import, uh, import. Uh, they are called orbit controls. There are like many types of controls, trackball and so on. But let's take orbit. 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 Mm -hmm. Like this. Controls. Yeah, exactly. From three uh, slash uh, examples. JSM. JSM is like uh, modules, uh, controls, orbit controls. Okay. And is it a named oh, export or is it? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a named export. I think that's correct. Okay. And uh, now you need uh, also to fetch something from uh, three fibers called extend. Uh, capital E, or? and just call this uh, just call this function extend uh, with an object and uh, slap orbit controls in there. Uh, this you do in the in the um, I mean up there. This is not something you want to do like more than once. Oh, I get you. Okay, so I explain. It looks weird, but I explain. Um, if you go to the section where you have uh, J six. Like the mesh and so on. You see, these are native elements, right? Like mm -hmm. box, buffer, geometry. But now we have taken uh, some class that is like foreign to three itself. Um, it does. It's it's uh, it's not in included in three JS. So to make uh, React three fiber know that this can also be used in JS six, you need to extend. And now you can actually you could write in inside here. You could say orbit controls. I can write inside. You could uh, write inside. Or the controls uh, written small. Oh, written small. Uh, um, how do you say it? Uh, lower caps. But uh, let's make a component out of this. Um, create a component you could call uh, controls. Okay. Oops. Mm -hmm. And am I going to use? Yeah. We need uh, some other stuff and just return the, the controls. Okay, and so it's just orbit controls. Orbit controls, um, dash case. And um, the first one is uh, lowercase. First one's lowercase. And controls, yeah, like that. Uh, you can close it. Okay. And it needs some arguments. If you want, you can uh, like uh, consult uh, 3JS to, to take a look. Okay, let's look at here. And then it was orbit controls. Orbit controls. 
and so we're the going class they need uh, the camera and the dom element <clears throat> okay mm. and so this um this dom we have element this. we're going to supply this um, okay in three fiber uh there's another hook it's called uh, use three this you need to, to fetch uh use three mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just call us in front of uh, the thing just uh, just execute and you get back some properties you can um destructure uh you get the camera for instance so with this uh, hook you get all the internals and if they change it re-renders the component that's the point of the thing okay and also uh give it gl that's that's really the the uh, low level web gl interface and so the first argument again you need arcs the first argument is going to be the camera um camp like it's an array. An and now it wants to have the dom element it's gl dot dom element mm -hmm. okay that's fine uh another thing we need to do is update it on every frame because it's not like wired into 3js at all it's a completely different uh they're called examples it's actually not part of 3js okay uh, so you need to put a reference on it okay You could call it, I don't know, orbit reference or orbit ref. And am I doing it in here or do I need to pass yeah, it in? In there. So you have uh, the reference. <clears throat> exactly. And now you need to render it on every frame. Okay. And I'm not sure how to do that. You you did it before. It's the same thing. Oh, so just use gaming. render. Hey, you know it. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm gonna pull use render came in from mm -hmm. fiber, right? Or did it come in from? Yeah, and that's it. Okay. You need to call um, into this reference and call update on it in this use render. It's a, it's a function on this class. Okay, so then I'm going to do orbit ref dot current dot current update. That's it. If everything's uh, in, it's a function. So oh. this function is called on every frame. Um, cool. It's not my idea, this stuff. It's, it comes from FGS. So basically, if you consult uh, the documentation, exactly, you need to pull it inside. If you consult this, uh, things will make sense. Uh, okay. It's like their rules. I'm, I'm sorry for this. Um, it's just like how it works. So if, you, if you're safe, uh, yeah, it should work. Oh my God. So orbit works like this. You have a top and a bottom and you cannot over uh, like uh, move over the top and the bottom. So what we are trying to do is uh, Holy first- buckets. did that uh, just work? Out yeah, of course. I mean, it's not so hard this stuff. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that is, um, it's, it's cool because this looks so hard. So seeing how easy Mm -hmm. it's been made is uh is this is really encouraging stuff um i mean vjs can be hard uh i yeah i can imagine that if you weren't uh, here to tell me what these these things were i'd be super lost no, right thank now goodness, no. uh, that's uh, sarah's job i'm um, just uh, teaching you like the kids stuff so um we need uh, to auto rotate it so you just can give it a prop uh, Auto rotate, then we'll start uh, to move by itself. Like auto rotate here? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, you could, but uh, just just right in there, just into these orbit controls. <clears throat> orbit controls, auto rotate. Mm, dash case. That's it. Safe. No, it should like. You don't need. Oh, it's just a. It's just... okay. I got you. Mm -hmm. I got you. Mm -hmm. Cool. But you can still like and then move I can... around. That's and awesome. And uh, now let's clamp it um, because you can still like go up and down. And uh, I have seen some Gatsby blocks where they have some like some moving stuff. That's why I wanted to show you this transmit 
they had this like truck and you can only like uh, rotate in one axis. So we need to clamp uh, the controls and it's called max polar angle uh, and min polar angle. Okay. And do I just set like uh... yeah, yeah, just uh, it's an it's an angle. So you say math dot pi, <clears throat> and pi is big, uh, and divided I don't know by three should be fine. And then you do the same with um, the min polar ang angle. And now it's clamped. Uh, and so just the same thing. Yeah, save it, and uh, now you can only. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I can't roll it anymore. I can just spin it. It's actually uh, it looks cool. Better. Okay, but if I did something like, I don't know, like this. Yeah, I know you have like some leeway. Oh, I so. I think I did that backwards. Maybe it's this one. It's three and two. Mm. Yeah, and then I can rotate it mm. a little bit, but not all the mm. way. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um... Yeah, there's, there's like many properties on this thing. You can figure it out. There's like enable damping. So if you pull it, it will like uh, like overshoot a little bit. Uh, it will not look so statically, but this stuff doesn't matter for now. Okay. Uh, now that we have this, uh, let's go into lightning uh, if you want. Yeah. Okay, cool. Wait, I'm getting some. Oh, we're going on an adventure. Okay. <laughs> All right. I guess I need to relocate. Okay. Sorry for this. No, no problem. Get the we get the uh, the voluntary house tour too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm getting. I I didn't want to go here, but uh, let's do it like this. Okay, cool. Um, lightning is going to suck now. Uh, the first thing you need to know is uh, to change the material. Okay. Um, the material we have right now, it's, it's not good. So uh, change the material to mesh physical material. Just straight up change it? Straight up. <clears throat> okay. If you, if, you, uh, if you save it, it will turn black. Okay. This is because uh, this one needs light to function. Okay. Uh, the first, the easiest uh, light is ambient light. You can just add it to the scene. Ambient light, and I just add it to the scene. Ambient light. As like a, as mm -hmm. a, like that? Like that. Okay. So if you hover it, yeah, it's, it's not a strong light. Uh, they have something like uh, intensity. You can uh, use this, but for now it's fine. Let's let's leave it like this. Okay. And now let's put some spotlight in it. This one is, is uh, interesting. Like so. So you just uh, you just go like uh, spotlight uh, dash case. Okay. And uh, let's put it a little bit, uh, or just save it. Let's see if it works. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's a little wild. It looks like it's directly above it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you can you can set uh, the position. Oops. Let's try something like um, what could we use? So let's try zero five ten. So it's X Y Z. Now yeah, we have right. dimensionality. Oh, I love it. That's so okay, cool. So next thing we are going to do is put some shadows in it. Uh, better make a new uh, component called plane. Component called plane. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this could be just a normal return. You don't need uh, hooks in this. Okay. Um, it will basically uh, be a mesh. Uh, am I animating this? No, it's okay. just there to receive some. Oh, shit. so we would need to add code. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> um, okay, so we got we've got a mesh. Mm -hmm. And you give it um, 
maybe you could even copy the two things uh, down there with where you did uh, the attaching logic. Okay. Uh, the mesh physical material doesn't need to be uh, A. It's it's we don't animate it. Okay. Uh, it's uh, color. You can just say white. Color is white. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we are not using a box. Uh, call it plain buffer material. Plain buffer material. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do I keep uh, this? Can, uh, the arguments are uh, also different uh, because uh, plane is only defined by two axes. Uh -huh. So let's make a hundred hundred. Okay. <clears throat> so if you save it, um, yeah, okay. This uh, could you make it red? Ooh. Maybe we see it better. Make it red. Got it. Oh, I'm not using it yet. Is why we're not seeing anything. Uh, I, okay. I um, <laughs> and does does order matter? Like, if I put the plane above or below, that's going to matter, right? No. Mm, it could matter, but uh -oh. uh, not for us. What's target happening? is not a constructor. <clears throat> what did I do? Did I screw something up? Plane buffer material. Or is it plain buffer ge geometry? Uh, no, it's, it's uh, geometry, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Whoa. And it's uh, at a completely uh, messed up spot, so we Holy need to crap. rotate it a little bit. <laughs> okay. So uh, you put rotate on it. Uh, it's, it's just a property on the mesh. Okay. And uh, let's flip, I don't know, we could flip both X or, uh, or Y, doesn't matter. Flip uh, the X axis and how... to um, math pi divided by two. It means like uh, half um, 360 degree. Oh, okay, I got you. Mm -hmm. But you need um, comma zero, comma zero for X, Y. Oh, I get you. Um, so X... Why? Um, wait, can I see, can I see the, uh, the code? Yep. Okay, miss is still, it's still missing uh, another zero. Oh, because it's we're in the Z. The, yes. And could you make uh, the angle minus? Let's see if this works. X, Y, Z. Uh, I, I think it's rotation, not rotate, sorry. I think you wrote uh, rotate. What are you doing, computer? Yeah, Why? Why are you like this? <laughs> um, needs to be rotation. Needs to be rotation. Mm hmm Ah, okay. All right, there we go. All right, that looks better. Um, we have this evil cutoff uh, from a spotlight. This we can remove. Um, if you go to the spotlight. Go to my spotlight. Mm hmm And um, the property is called penumbra, if I pronounce this correctly. Penumbra, I don't know. Like that? and put it to one. This would like um, make it a little bit more soft. Oh, yeah. cool. Perfect. And it sucks uh, that we can see the edges of this uh, plane. So, so we can cut this off by using some fog. Um, so just put some fog in, in the 3JS scene. Uh, you can go down there into this canvas. Uh -huh. Uh, you just say fork. It's it's like a generic um, component from 3GS. What? Yeah, it's it's like everything is there, but you need to attach it. This is uh, it's a little bit weird, but 3GS can do. Uh, you need to say uh, attach, and the string is fork. So basically, um, it writes itself in the fork property of 3GS. 
and you need to give it some arguments. Okay. Like so? Um, the first one is the color, uh, let's say white. Oh, like the, are the, is it args or? It's, it's always args. Uh, this is always the same. And it's always an array. So the first one is the color. Okay. Uh, now is where the fox uh, starts, uh, let's say five units. Five units. And where it ends, 15 units. 15. We could find. Yeah. So. Oh, that's kind of cool. All right. That's a little bit uh, maybe. <laughs> A little, mm -hmm. little better? Yeah, maybe we should move closer to the object. Um, could you add uh, the uh, property camera to this canvas uh, object? And uh, it's an object. <clears throat> and just give it position. Um. You say uh, you, you open an object, position. Position. And it receives an array. Okay. And zero, zero, I don't know, five. Let's try it. Now we should be, yeah, okay. Now we should be closer. And if I, I load, think it'll... you can go back to five, uh, 15 now for these uh, cutoff properties. You can disable zooming, by the way, if, it's, if it annoys you. Yeah, okay. So that's fine. And now we need to distribute uh, the shadows. Um, Do, should we pull spotlights. this? It looks like this is getting mm -hmm. cut in half by the plane. Uh, right. Uh, you can use the position property. You can uh, say minus, I don't know, 0 0.5. And that would be on the plane. I think it's on the Y axis. Uh, on the plane, exactly, on the mesh. And you say position again gets um, gets an array and zero zero and that would minus be minus zero dot five and zero now it should be fine ah yeah okay okay we are very close um, now let's put uh, shadows in it okay and then I guess we have made a giant uh, step. Uh, first thing I would do is uh, put this back to to white. Holy uh, buckets! Did that just plane, work? Okay. This plane looks crappy. Okay, yeah, so I'm now we've it. got, yeah, like basic basic colors. The spotlight showing up, it fades to fades to the background. Mm -hmm. okay. Just um, just need some some shadow. So in 3JS, it works like this. Uh, you need to tell materials or meshes that I can receive shadow. And it works like this. Just put receive shadow to this uh, material. To the plane, for instance. Uh, you go to material. the plane, to the mesh. Receive shadow? Uh, no, to the mesh. Oh, to That's the mesh. the idea is correct. Mm -hmm. Uh, doesn't work uh, like this yet. Okay. Um, and for the box, it needs uh, to be able to, um, I think it was called cast shadow. And cast shadow also on the spotlight. And that should be, um, that should be it. Try it. All ah, right, we are still missing something. Uh, this is going to suck, and it's not my fault. It's uh, 3JS again. Uh, <laughs> okay. You need to you need to tell it uh, that it uh, needs to create shadows. So basically, uh, on the canvas element, you have a property. It's called on created. Camera element, which was down here. No, where is it here? Mm -hmm. okay. On the canvas, you say uh, uh, on created. And uh, this is going to receive um, an object. Oh, an object. OK. Mm -hmm. uh, you can spread it. For this, it needs uh, uh, normal brackets around it. 
like uh, the normal, like the round brackets. Okay. Exactly. Now the the uh, the other brackets that you just had. Okay. And you say GL, <clears throat> and it's a function, so we'll give it a function body. Um, how did this work? Um, it's GL dot shadow map. Shadow map. Dot enabled and true. Enabled and two? Uh, true, sorry. Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. And do the same thing, uh, GL shadow map dot type. And now you need to import uh, 3JS because we need to type from it. So up there, you can say import dot S3. You can see now it gets uh, pretty, uh, it, it starts to get complex. So you say dot uh, S3. Dot S, like, am I writing I dot? I mean, the, the, how is this called? The star? The, uh, oh, the star I get, symbol? yeah. Star S3. Uh -huh. Uh, three, they always use the, the big one, uh, like all cap, all caps. Oh, okay. Three. Three. And yes, and now we almost have it. So uh, down there to the type, and you say three dots. Um, I hope IntelliSense helps you. PCF. Yeah, that's it. PCF soft shadow map. Okay. And is that oh, that's, that's, uh, yeah, let's cross uh, thumbs. It's, it should work. It doesn't? Did it? Oh, here we go. I needed to reload. Ah, uh, thank goodness. So, okay. Um, cool. This actually looks pretty cool. Um, yeah. We have like all box uh, ticked. We have uh, animation, we have interaction. You can still click it, right? I can still click it, yes, and it turns pink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And depending so on the intensity of the want, sun. Uh, do we want to put a cherry on top, or are you tired yet? Uh, let's see. We've got we got about twenty minutes left. Let's put a cherry on top. All right. Your call. <laughs> uh, so let's let's make something really cool. Let's. Uh, do you know um, how this is called? Um, Sketch Fab. It's its own website. It's on 3D. Holy buckets, uh, did that just work? Sketch up? Uh, FAB. That? F-A-B. 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 Mm-hmm. Try this. You can get like free, uh, th uh, free 3D models from this. Uh, just log in or sign in quickly. Uh, just with your, I don't know, Facebook, whatever. Um, I think this is the, the sign up. Oh, I can just, yeah, let me just sign up with. No, not that one. Damn it, go back. Okay. All right, okay. Um, you can say discover or whatever. <clears throat> okay. And I'm just going to continue. Okay, I have to do a thing. What is uh, this? Uh, just, just go through. We don't need any of this stuff. All right, uh, so click uh, the little icon, the search icon. Let's get some cool model from this. Um, click uh, downloadable. So that you can download it, okay. and filter, and I don't know space. Let's download some spaceship. Mm -hmm. Whoa! Uh, scroll down. These they cost. Uh, yeah, this one is cool. Um, the one on the upper left. Here. This for free. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you just say download three D model. Okay. It's, it's, it's down there. Oh, okay. Hold on a second. I gotta, I gotta confirm my email. Uh, okay. Apparently, you can do that off screen. I think. Yeah. 
let's go to um okay but i don't have that email oh here it is okay copy the link bring it over here all right and now if i reload i should be able to download this there we go um, download uh, the GLTF. Okay. Um, maybe you can make notes because uh, Sarah, she will explain all of the stuff to you. I don't even need to bother. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so unpack this. Uh, now you have the model. And um, in Create React App, normally you have uh, a folder that's called uh, public. I'm not sure if you have this in Gatsby. Like just something we can access from the... Yes, Okay. Yeah. exactly. No problem there. Um, what we can do with it is we'll put it in the static folder, which is the same the same general idea. Um, this would be amazing. And just put the contents in there, not... Just uh, all of them? Like everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, you can do this with war. I didn't, I didn't know this. Copy. Okay. This is cool. <laughs> All right, so now we have access to those. Okay, and uh, let's create a new component. Let's call it a spaceship. Okay. And how are we going to start? Um, it needs to loader. And um, could you copy this line with the orbit controls? It's basically the same thing we get uh, the loader from the examples. Uh, up there, you have to import orbit controls. Uh, just uh -huh. copy the, the, the whole line. Copy the whole line. Mm -hmm. And uh, duplicate it. And the thing is called GLTF loader. And the GLTF is uh, in caps. Like that? Mm, yep. And is this uh, in like loaders? Uh, this perfect. Yeah, you got it. Your loader. Okay. And then do okay. I need to like do the same uh, thing here? No, this find. Uh, this is just we. Uh, it's it's uh, like a function. Okay. Um, Okay, this one is async, so uh, we need uh, we need it to be inside a uh, effect. Oh, the f that's no, okay. Uh, this is fine. I mean, the the function is async exactly. Okay. So use effect. All right. So I guess everything that's that's async, it's an effect. We could also do it uh, like in the main space of your JavaScript file, but let's do it here. Okay, and so and this one we're you, we're loading the model, so that'll be async, and we're. That's even easier. Uh, uh, cut the off. It's easier than this. Oh really? Mm, you just say GLTF loader, or actually, I actually think it's new GLTF loader. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so you construct the class. And no, it's fine. It has no parameters. Okay. And now you get a function that's called load. Oh, uh, like I, I'm no just doing parameters. load. Load. Uh, the first one is the URL of this uh, file. I guess it would be slash. Um, what did we call this? Called? Scene dot gltf. Scene gltf. Yeah, like this. And the second parameter is a set function. So you can uh, just do a use state uh, uh, on top of it. No, here in oh, oh, just yeah, set. I got, I understand. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, you can say model and set or set model. Yeah, use state. Nothing in there. Like that. Uh, set model. All right. Um, now, could you uh, console lock this out so that we are uh, that we know that um, underneath the the effect, I guess. Mm -hmm. Console log model and return now uh, for now. 
Okay. Okay, and run it. Let's see if, if it uh, works. I've never uh, tried this in Gatsby. Yeah, we. I might have to mess with that to get the to get that thing to load. But um, let's pull this up. Ah, it works. <laughs> it works. Okay. Uh, now we just need to to present it, uh, and that's easy. So go back to the code. Okay. Here is our spaceship. Yeah, the thing is like this. Actually, we have a imperative 3JS object. It's a real scene with meshes and everything inside it. Normally, we, we like to, to uh, declare our objects. Okay. Um, but if you have something ready-made, like from, from a foreign place, uh, there's a special object that's called primitive. So just give it a JSX tag and call it primitive. Primitive, uh, then you say object and just uh, plaster the, the model inside, uh, close to primitive. And uh, please check for the model. Uh, if there's a model, you say primitive. If uh, there's noth uh, nothing, you say no, because we are still async. That's right, that's right, that's right. So Actually, we... you don't need the, the brackets for this. Um, you, can, you can skip them. Oh, yeah. I totally can do that. Uh, I don't know why it's what it complains. It's, okay, it's, it's fine. It? It's just catching up. Um, okay. So that. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, model dot scene. Model dot scene. Mm. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Hmm. Okay, so, so let's... let's make it look a little bit uh, cool and then we drop out. Yeah, uh, yeah, that seems... This? Okay, so let's remove um, remove the plane. We don't need it. Holy buckets, did that just work? Okay, so we're going to drop out the plane and I'm just going to yeah. comment this out so that when we commit mm -hmm. this, people will be able to see what's going on. Should I also comment out my box and maybe remove the fog? Yeah, it looks kind of cool, but yeah, remove it. I do like that it's like <clears throat> fading into the fog. That is pretty. Mm, it looks nice. But I guess for now, let's, uh, let's, or I guess let's we could leave just, it for now. We could just we set it back later. further, right? Yeah, this could also work. Exactly. Yeah, that way we can, we can see know. a little bit more of it before we lose it. And then we're going to get um, rid of the, the box. box. Exactly. Okay, box is gone. Oh, but we lost our light. Because the box was casting um, shadows, right? So I think we lost the yeah. Oh yeah, the box had all of our uh, ambient okay. light. And this stuff should be in the in the uh, in the cameras. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Now we should. Okay, the light looks a little bit crappy. Um, could you put um, the light a little bit higher? Uh, let's say I don't know, fifteen twenty-five. Try this. 15, 25. Okay, it's, I think it's still a little bit too intense. Um, could you say uh, on the ambient light intensity 0 0.5? Yeah, that looks a little bit more dramatic, I guess. Oh yeah, okay. now. Yeah, that's. And I guess they remove the the white background and make something black or a little bit darker, like uh, on the styles CSS. And on style, we'll set it to. And try this. Maybe cool. It's too, too dark. But yeah, you, you get the idea. Um, actually, this Second canvas color? is transparent. So you could put like some big uh, Jumbotron text behind or whatever. You could put HTML elements in front of it. You could Very interact. Nice. So you have lots of possibilities with this. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that's like, <laughs> this is obviously, this looks terrible, but um, it's, it's very cool that this is. Mm. And so if I were to say I could, I've got my canvas, but I could put, yeah, um, behind this. 
put something around it and let's say I'll put in an H1 that says, mm -hmm. and then in here we could take that and do like a H1. Um, font weight 800, like some jumbotron thing. 800 font size we could make like 20 EM. Ooh, 20 EM. And then <laughs> um, we can do like text align center and we'll make the color uh, hot pink again. Don't need to quote that. <clears throat> does the, I guess it's did the fog it down. does the fog eat it? Uh, if you say this, uh, uh, how's it called? Position absolute and uh, top zero, left zero should be fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then we would just want to do something uh, like we could just do you, Z if index. You, if you put it uh, before the um, before the canvas, it should uh, be behind. Uh, oh, really? Uh, or else you can also do it like this. Well, because I was thinking um, it's because I set the, mm -hmm. the position to absolute, so I can set the position relative on the canvas, and we'll do a Z index mm -hmm. of 10, and that should fix it but then we lose it because of the fog. So I think if we take the fog out, then that would not no, change I think it's, anything. Uh, it's, it's behind now. Um, could you just move the H1 uh, up there? Yep, I can do that. Let's get rid of this, get rid of this. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna move the H1 up above the canvas. Where is it? I think I feel like we put a background color and it's uh Yeah. Where did you set it? because uh, if I take this uh, out. Yes. Yeah. So oh oh I know why. It's because um we set the background of like the of everything. So if I just set the body to background yeah, black. Just, um, give it a, a better uh, font, I guess. Try Helvetica, something like this, and so we're pretty close to some like typical Gatsby type of uh, like header image, whatever. So you can do pretty cool stuff. Yeah. That looks yeah. Better. I mean, th this is this is very cool. Um, and there's a, I mean, obviously a lot that we would want to fix here, but uh, of course, and... it's, it's just a start. Um, we have to, do, I guess, uh, I, I give you like some small hints on how you would be able to create uh, such images like this rocket. Um, and then we have through. Could you could you Google for Blender? I, I see you come from a design background. You need it to look. Uh, I can't. I can't not fix it. I. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm searching for Blender. Uh... Yeah, um, the Blender, uh, just just like this. Uh, if you go on the, on this website, the Blender. Yeah, if you know, uh, just Blender. I don't know. The Blender? I feel like this is going to show just... me cooking stuff. Yeah. Oh, no way. I guess. It just, yeah, just showed up the first thing. I was sure uh, that uh, that Google was going to, like, know my heart and uh, show me a bunch of dumb, like, oh, you need yeah, a Ninja Blender. Yeah. Um, so this is free software. It's super complicated. You can download it there. Uh, don't do it now. Uh, everything you see there on Sketchfab is probably done with this uh, software. It's super, super powerful. It has millions of buttons. Okay. Uh, but I give you some very uh, small YouTube tutorial. Uh, it's I think it's like half an hour. And if you can do this, you can do some basic uh, stuff. Okay. Where and let's see. I need to share some links. So we've got this. We had the Sketchfab. Sketchfab. Or if you download something from other people, and if you go to YouTube, going to YouTube. Mm -hmm. Whoops. And search for Blender two point eight introduction. Introduction. This one, and it's, uh, it's a third one. Here. No, no, wait. Uh, the, the fourth. Here. This one, Jan, Jan Scholz. If you ever buy anything yeah. from Apple, 
Okay. He's teaching you how to do some dumb little sword, but you will see the software is uh, amazing. Okay. Uh, I also learn. I, I only know the basics. Um, I'm not even sure if I could do this rocket, maybe. Uh, but for, for everyone who wants to check this out, you can make your own models. And if you have this door open, really, um, WebGL can be lots of fun because you can make games, you can make it for blogs and front end, whatever. So cool. Yeah, I mean, this this is super cool. I'm uh, I'm really pumped up about this. So I think we have like you've you've blown my mind already so i'm i'm uh, i'm super happy to be digging into this stuff um where can people find you online uh, online on on twitter of course uh, they they i guess just search for my name because i have the stupid <laughs> handle is it is I there a story bit- behind that yeah. is there a story behind that that's like a bit point right no this is I, no i just heck <laughs> I love that. It's like, oh, what's my Twitter name going to be? Done. <laughs> yeah, that, that, I have, and I have on like every platform I am. I have like a different name. I'm, I'm not so big uh, about like being in the open, being exposed. I don't like this normally. I, I don't care if people know me. Hmm. If I get like uh, credits, I, I don't care about this stuff. Okay. Well, yeah. It's well, I mean, we we very much appreciate the work that you're doing on on. React 3 Fiber on on React Spring. Um, th- this was super fun. Like I've had an absolute blast uh, digging into this and, and getting something working. I will get this uh, put up online so that people can take a look at it. Uh, what I'll probably do is take this final version on one page and do the the box on another page so that we can look at both examples. Yeah. Um, and fix the layout. <laughs> yeah, but this is uh, this is super super exciting stuff. I think it's it's really cool to see. Um, like how approachable this is. Like I never would have thought that I could put a rocket ship in space that uh, mm-hmm. that actually worked in the browser and do it inside of 90 minutes. So Paul, thank you so much for coming on. Um, everybody stay tuned. We've got, uh, we ended up having to reschedule with EJ next week, but we've got um, several things coming up. Come on, buttons. We're, oh, schedule is what I'm trying to click. So EJ and I are going to reschedule, but uh, I, I think... Still confirming. I think we're gonna have Philip Hookthun and um, Jovi from Formidable come on and teach us Urkel, which is gonna be really cool. Urkel's a, a GraphQL library; it's similar to Apollo. And then um, the Monday after that, we're going to have Sarah Drasner on to teach us uh, 3JS. So that'll be kind of a continuation of what we did here. We'll go a little bit deeper. She was gonna show us how to make. Um, I think she had a plan to like auto generate 3D houses, which is gonna be amazing. Um, yeah, y'all, it's, it's going to be great. Uh, so I think with that, we're, we're all, we're all done. We're, we're set to go. Um, any, any final words? No, I guess not. I, I had uh, fun. Thanks for doing this. Uh, obviously thanks for doing it for free. So everyone can learn. I, I really admire when someone does this. Uh, it's great. And yeah, try it out. Awesome. See where you, uh, where you end up. All right. Thanks so much. And uh, everybody stay tuned. We're going to raid here in just a second. So uh, we will we'll see you next time. Right. Bye.